Hello, welcome. My name is San. This is a reading today for Sagittarius. There are no dates on my readings. I trust that when they find you, if they resonate, then they're yours at that time. Sagittarius, I'm doing your reading with a blend of multiple decks. So you'll see a mix of decks in your spread today. So we've got, oh, the adventurous heart. This was in yesterday's reading. It was talking about being mysterious. This is, could absolutely apply to you again here today, Sagittarius, because there is the the hem card here on the table and it feels like this the reason why he is here on the table is perhaps because you are being particularly mysterious at this moment and the grieving heart open doors to something new okay so i feel like this is you this is your energy here is this grieving heart and this it says adventurous heart on this one, but I want to say it's mysterious because this this figure is, is obscured. It's difficult to get a good view of her, or a good read of her energy. And I want to say that because there's some sort of a healing going on, that's what I was seeing here on the table. Um, this grieving card is just accentuating that for me. So you may be going through like literally through a grief process. If you haven't lost someone recently, um, and it's just a kind of like a grieving of an aspect of your life or an aspect of you, something that you're, you've you had to let go of. Maybe because of that though, it feels like there's a, like a new pathway opening up for you. So it's like something maybe passing out of your life, but you're working on, you're putting a lot of work and focus on kind of seeing your path ahead or opening a new path. It's kind of how it's looking to me. Um, so because of that, a lot like yesterday's reading for Scorpio, you could be kind of out of view right now. And it's the reason why it's, it's interesting how Scorpio had a similar thing. It's definitely different for you here, but Scorpio's was that they had stepped out of the scene for whatever reason. And in the meantime, somebody was approaching them, somebody that they didn't seem to know. I feel like, you know, this individual, um, and it feels to me like they're coming in because you've, you're being very mysterious. Okay, so if you're going through some sort of grieving or healing, I wanna say that you're doing it very privately. It's not something that that is known. So the fact that your energy has shifted or your activities have shifted is maybe what's drawing in this, this King of Air character. It's like, almost like coming in to check on you, coming to see how you're doing because something about you has shifted and they are tuned into that. Okay, overall energy from the Lefruma Healing Oracle for Sagittarius. Health and restore. Okay, so we're absolutely talking about a healing, a healing process. This actually looks to me, this card makes it feel like it could be almost like a decluttering as we're coming into spring here in the Northern Hemisphere. Perhaps you're just getting that need to spring clean and clear up could be talking about your physical your physical space but it could be talking about your energetic space too especially with these two cards here um you know it's kind of looking like it's like the, obviously well they're the heart it's the heart healing deck but so the heart is really emphasized here but it's almost like it's being removed an aspect of your heart is being removed or actually it looks like it's being placed back in. Okay, so well, let's get into the reading. So this healing or cleansing could be applied in very many ways in your life. It actually looks like, um, from what's here on the table before these cards came out on the split, it actually looked almost like clearing or cleansing your um, your third eye, in a sense, your ability to see farther, to see farther down the road is being cleaned up or healed. And I want to say, of course, it could all be connected. If you're going through grief, if you're just going through a, a kind of uh, cyclical decluttering phase, all of that is contributing to the fact that upon getting that work done, it feels like a path is beginning to open up for you. Um, so we're beginning here with the patient heart card, but it says patient as in like to be patient, but it was actually, this figure here almost looks like a nurse to me, right? So this is where I was getting this idea of healing, like patient as in, in a hospital and being nursed back to health, you being the nurse in this situation, but applying it in a sense to your own 
high priestess energy. It's like the high priestess is what is what is being healed and or like I said because of the work that you're doing here with this eight of earth coming next is next it's like all this work and healing see what I mean all surrounding this high priestess energy so it might not be this specific intent is to claim it's almost as if um, you know when you get like a frosty windshield and you begin to clean it off or, or to defrost it and then you can see through right that's like the veil here it's like you're cleaning cleaning and cleansing the veil of your perception but like I'm trying to say, that's not necessarily your intent. It's not necessarily that that's what you're setting out to do, but it's the effect of it. The effect of it is that this high priestess energy is coming to the forefront. It could very much be part of your intention, um, but it just, because of this, all this healing and this grieving energy here and this mystery around it, it feels like it's very multi-layered, right? But it's kind of like, as you complete this process, as you come to the end of this process, you realize that ultimately it was in a sense all about the high priestess or coming into some sort of a new ability to access your intuition in a clearer or sharper way is what I want to say. You got all these bees around. It's interesting because the bees, the bees sometimes come through, well, they're worker bees, of course, right? But they almost feel like in this card for you today, they almost feel like a nuisance like a past right where it's like you're out in the garden you're out trying to get something done and you, and these bees are in the way the buzzing is in the way or the buzzing is aggravating despite that you're still getting the work done so it's like there's something at you there's something nagging at you or there's 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 something in the environment that is like working against you not in a major way but just in an in an irritating way but nevertheless, you are diligent. That's what all this patience and hard work is talking about. It's like, despite whatever opposition may be in place or difficulties may be in place or hindrances, it's like you are diligently working away at this, at healing this aspect in order, in order to uncover the high priestess. It's almost as if you're like clearing all of this, these brambles and such in order to Allow the high priestess room to thrive and expand. It's interesting now. It almost feels like it's the high priestess might be somebody else. I mean, it could very much be an aspect of yourself, of course. But it almost feels like now, I mean, because you're coming through as the nurse, it's like this high priestess may be the pa your patient in a sense something that you're helping to uncover and revive, give space to expand and thrive. But in that process, this is the world card is coming up next. It feels like for the majority of you that this is all you and your stuff, that there's not a, a patient, that you're just working on yourself. You're working on cleaning up your own life, your own habits, your own environment with the result being that this high priestess is becoming really sharp or becoming the main character. It's like an aspect of you that is stepping to the foreground because you're making space for it, right? So it's almost as if this grieving heart up here may be connected to this high priestess in the past somehow. This high priestess being an aspect of you connected to this grieving heart. It's like maybe this grief, this pain, this wounding is quite some time ago and you're just getting to the point now where you're able to address it and cleanse it and and clear it out it's like an old wound it's an old wound maybe that hasn't been looked at for a time but you're ready now so you're clearing out you're clearing the path that's what this world card is talking about too right so it's like something happened however long ago that it feels like you were just kind of resting with it or allowing it or maybe even just just not ready to deal, to deal with it or not ready to look at it. But now you are because it's almost like because the path has become overgrown, right? It's like all this shrubbery, all this brambles here have grown over the path. And so now you're clearing it out, but it's tied to this high priestess. So in a sense, it's this kind of inner path or this inner sight. You're clearing some stuff out of your psyche or out of your life in order to be able to focus through the high priest lens and see 
kind of like your own future or your own path ahead. And that's what you're doing. Very much focused on that. But the fascinating thing is the wallflower coming out next and then the king of air, right? So, so I was saying, it's like this king of air is drawn into what's happening here. But at the same time, there's something about this, this, this world is almost looking like a ladder in a sense, right? And then with this wall here, it's almost as if you're climbing this ladder and peeking over the wall and when you do that, you're seeing this king of air. But basically, however that's happening, whether you're stumbling upon him, you're kind of working towards something. And when you get to a certain point in that process, you bump into him or he's just kind of arriving. It's almost as if he's coming in unannounced and catching you off guard. That's what this wallflower is looking like, right? It's like somebody who's caught in the process of doing something that they don't necessarily want or expect to be witnessed you see how it's almost like whatever this work is that you're doing it's like it's like you want to hide behind it you weren't expecting the king of air to come in and perceive this or witness this the king of air does talk about clarity right it's like he can see really clearly what you're doing and for some reason that's making you uncomfortable it's like you want to hide I mean, maybe it's related to him, but it doesn't actually feel like it is. But you would know best, and it's unique for all of you, about whether the whatever it is that you're working to clear is related to him. It's like maybe you're trying to um, detangle from from him, perhaps. And then there he is walking in and saying, "What are you like? What are you doing with all of my stuff?" For example, but it feels more like. Maybe somebody that you haven't seen in some time. I want to say that there's some, they're kind of like intuitively connected to you. So the fact that something has shifted in your vibration has pulled on them energetically. And it's the reason they're there to come and check on you is because of this mystery card. It's like something's going on with Sagittarius. I don't know what it is. So I'm just going to go and check on them. And it's this utter surprise. You're like, what are you doing here? I didn't expect to see you here. It almost feels like you have something to hide in a sense because you got spill the tea coming up next. And it's like, well, now that you're here, now that you've witnessed this, I'm going to have to tell you, I'm going to have to spill my guts about this and let you know what is happening. Or that's the guidance, maybe. Maybe that's not your instinct, but the guidance here, the suggestion coming from the card is that you should just lay it all out. Share with the king of air because... There's a reason that he's here and it may be, although it's unexpected and maybe it makes you a little bit uncomfortable because it's like there's something that you didn't want anyone to see, right? It's like this, it's almost like you're embarrassed or for whatever reason, I wouldn't say ashamed. I don't think that's the appropriate word. <laughs> it's maybe, maybe you just didn't want them to it's like you don't want your process to be witnessed until it's complete because there's something about that in yesterday's reading as well too right like not wanting to show your work until it's completed so there could be something about the way that that work is getting done that is that is not wanting to be seen perhaps okay so king of air is here and you're just gonna have to deal with it it's like well now that you're here there's probably no way really to not let them in on what's going on. But what's going on doesn't seem, I mean, from my perspective, of course, I don't know the details, to be, you know, anything secretive. I guess maybe it's just private and or if it's related to the king of air, I could see where that would make things uncomfortable because it's like if you're trying to remove them from your heart and or trying to put them back into your heart, as I was saying here, um... It's like maybe you just weren't ready to share that, especially if it's wanting to remove them from your life or from your heart. It's like you want that detangling to be complete before they ever catch wind of it, for example. But it could also be that you're trying to, that's interesting, maybe trying to heal from something related to him, perhaps. And because of that, it could be the very reason why he's here. Because there, there could still be some some aspect of that healing that requires his presence see what i'm saying or because it's because of whatever it is has been healed then he can then be present because you are 
whole again, for example, or you're, you've moved past that and so now a new chapter can begin, for example. Okay, but the Three of Swords and the star coming up next is talking about what it is that you have to share with him when you spill the tea. It's talking about heartache or wounding, the moment of the injury or the, the whatever the source of this entire cleansing is and then moving into the star. So it's basically the whole process. Spill your guts, tell the whole story about the whole process from beginning to end where the moment happened where you received the injury to the moment now where you are, where you're returning back to the star energy, which is healing. Heal, this is the thing, and it's coming out right beneath the high priestess because you're healing or you're cleansing. Because like I said, it could be like a decluttering. It could even like be cleaning up your diet. It could be in many forms, right? Whatever that is that you're healing or cleansing or removing from your life is returning you to health, but in that healthy whole state, it also strengthens your high priestess energy because it connects you to the North Star and knowing your guidance. It's like suddenly you know exactly where you're going. The path is clear, right? Which is interesting. The path is really clear. The path is really clear. You're seeing the path clearly now. You may be really surprised to see him on the same path, for example, or that he is part of your path moving forward. Could just be that it's unexpected. Maybe he's not actually standing in front of you. Maybe this is your guidance as you receive this kind of inner download or vision of your own future and realize that he is part of it. It's saying spill the, spill the beans, uh, Sagittarius. Maybe you need to approach them and let them know what you've discovered in this healing journey, for example. Okay, so you've got the strength card next. This is really interesting here. The strength card and the head in the clouds. There's something here about in the process of this journey from wounding to complete healing, there's some this process that happened for you where, of course, yes, it strengthened you, but it's almost as if it's allowed you to expand your perception. It's this kind of thing here. I was saying it's like going up the ladder and being able to see past a wall or a veil that you hadn't been able to perceive beyond before. And that's the interesting thing because clearly, this is a, cl a card of clarity. Clearly, th this, is, this is part, maybe actually a big part of what's becoming clear to you when you perceive your future. Right? It's like you've, uh, it's, it's almost like you've been in, your life has maybe been a bit of a clutter recently because you've been dealing with some sort of loss or grief or illness perhaps, right? So it's almost like all of that cluttered energy has been surrounding you. You've been very present, just kind of dealing day to day, moment to moment, hour to hour, for example. But now you've, 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 um, some of your strength has returned. And as that strength is returned, you're using it to do this work, to clear out all of this clutter. And in that clearing process, it begins to clear your vision as well too, right? Because it's like, you're being elevated, you're being stretched, you're being able to perceive farther out into the horizon than you were when you were surrounded by all of this clutter and the buzzing bees. The buzzing bees, I want to say is, is somebody else's energy, which is fascinating. And it could be somebody, oh, this is fascinating. The bees are multidimensional, right? They're trans-dimensional. They can move through dimensions. They defy physics. They're not bound by physics. So the bees, I almost want to say is, it could be some sort of kind of energetic interference, maybe from somebody else, somebody that's meddling, maybe somebody that worries about you. I don't. I don't know. It's not definitely not coming from the king of air. It could even just be almost like your, your mother's voice in the back of your head, somebody's voice in the back of your head that is still like a very active kind of gnawing energy. It doesn't have to be your mother, of course, but you see what I'm saying? It's like somebody that is interested in what you're doing, which is interesting because that's what this king of air is doing too. They're interested in what you're doing because you're mysterious and they want to peek in on you. But so it's like, there's another energy that is interested in wanting to peek in on you, but they're actually almost like ever present. This one isn't, this one isn't like this constant um, awareness on you 
they are being drawn in because something has changed. But this energy here, this buzzing of the bees, it's almost as if it's ever present, whatever that is. I mean, it could be somebody that you live with. It could be somebody physically in your environment. Because, it, But because it's coming with the bee imagery, it feels like more of like a psychic realm, a telepathic, energetic realm, uh, meddling energy in some form, right? So... But this is, this is reaching beyond that. It could be part of that. The fact that there's been this buzzing in your ears or just, you know, just in your environment. There's all this kind of static or vibration in your environment that is related to whatever this grief or healing or illness is that you're clearing out. And as you do that, it's almost as if you're, you're either getting rid of the bees or you're moving to a space that they're not, right? Because it's like you're you're looking out up over the fence. It's almost as if you're ready to leave your own garden at this point, if that makes sense, right? It's like this is almost like the wall around your own space, your own yard, your own garden. And it's like you've climbed the ladder and you're ready to jump over that wall into the neighbor's yard. And this just so happens to be your neighbor, which is funny because it's reading was that we were talking about the bubbles the bubbles in the next cell right the king is in the next cell over from you okay so anyway all this idea about kind of being stretched and strengthened because you are your your strength is returning to you it's almost like this dial right it's like the more you are able to clear and cleanse and kind of crank down the dial of what it is that's aggravating or cluttering your consciousness or your vision the more um, you're able to see beyond it, obviously, right? Or the, your vision gets stronger. But what's interesting is the page of Earth is coming up next. And this is coming through. He comes through often as remembrance. But today, and that's part of it. It's almost like there's something that you're remembering, you're seeing, that you're seeing in your own future that you're going, oh, yeah, I almost forgot that I wanted to experience that or that I you know, had already gotten a glimpse of this, or I knew this was part of my destiny, something like that. There's some sort of remembrance coming in and what you're seeing like up the path now that you've cleared away the debris. But there's also something here that kind of like it's coming in underneath this wallflower that feels a little bit like a self-consciousness. And especially because it's with the head in the clouds next to it. There's this idea almost as if you've been caught with your head in the clouds again, by this king of air, which is funny because he's the king of air. So you think if anybody could understand, it would be him. I mean, he's definitely a, a head in the clouds type of an energy or, as well, or has the potential to be, has the potential to be, may not always be, or may not often be. But it's almost like this self-consciousness, like I've been caught with my head in the clouds again. This, this um, page of earth here, though, wants to say to that this is your message to the king of air, <clears throat> my head might be in the clouds, but it's not a game. It's not, it's not child's play. That's what this mess, this card is always talking about is the fact that people think that he's playing a game. That he's dressed up as, as a character and he's playing make believe, but he isn't. He's actually a figure of powerful remembrance. He knows who he is. And so though he's wearing wings and he has a wand and he may be kind of uh, being very playful and childlike, and this is you, Sagittarius. These are all the energies that you're embodying, perhaps, in front of this king of air right now. Although I'm coming through as very playful and very, um, maybe even silly by some people's standards. It's none of it is silly and it's not a game and I'm not playing. This is all really real. This is me remembering who I am. This is me embodying who I am. And who I am is not conventional, right? It's like I might have wings and I might have a crown and I might be some sort of, sort of a spiritual warrior, for example, but I'm not playing. And this isn't me with my head in, it is me with my head in the clouds, but it's a beneficial place to be because that's where all this mothy energy is. Look at all the moths in this card. This is powerful. This may be the card in all of my decks that has the most moths in it. And the moths are powerful, powerful seer and trans, trans dimensional beings, just like the bees. Look at all of those, the one on the forehead, the eyes all swirling around. And I want to say this is like your happy place because this is the realm of the high priestess. It's like you have moved back into the realm of the high priestess. It's like you were once this powerful, powerful seer or high priestess energy, strongly, strongly intuitive. 
something I believe has happened to you recently or maybe even not so recently but wasn't being dealt with that now you're ready to finally clean it up. It's almost just like raking up old leaves, like cleaning up old debris and clutter that isn't really active anymore but it might feel like it's active because there's this bee energy that is giving it some vibration, right? But it's not part of, I feel like you, you know all of that with all of this kind of clarity coming in for you that you're seeing the difference between what is still actively alive in your energy and what is almost being like artificially um, activated by some sort of a meddling energy. It's like somebody else is keeping it alive. I mean, it's like somebody else in your life that keeps talking about whatever this past situation is in an attempt to keep it alive or then they're just, their attention on it is keeping it alive in some form. You see what I mean? So, but you're moving powerfully past that now because you are backing your high priestess strongly with a lot of strength. That's what this, it looks like this. That's what the strength card is reaching up to the high priestess. It's like you've reconnected with that finally. It feels like such a relief. It feels like exactly where you belong. So you may have been, maybe you've received a lot of judgment about this in the past because there's this self-consciousness about it. Like, oh no, here I am again with my head in the clouds. But for you, it feels like such a relief. It's where you belong, right? Which is maybe what you should be saying to this king of air is that this is where I belong. This is where I belong. This is who I am and I'm not playing. It's not a game. It's, it's actually quite potent the power here the energy here is quite potent and then the sun card at the end of the reading this is that really fascinating sun card that talks about that that kind of channeling uh energy down from a higher dimension right so it's almost as if you've kind of um you have almost in a sense become trans-dimensional at this point right because you see here how all the work is happening kind of crouch down in this area here but it's like now you're having this breakthrough up into this higher realm where the sun is it's like the sun is finally shining upon you again the clarity is finally coming back in again but it's like it's almost like you're still at this phase where it requires effort right because it's like the clouds are still there there's still some like you're still in the process of decluttering but you've had this breakthrough where you're now reconnected to your vision or your vision is getting clearer and you're able to see what needs to happen next it's like you're able to see what your next steps are or where it is that you're going finally which seems to be king of air um so anyway okay i think i'm going to leave it there it's getting very long i'm going to continue to pull cards and create an extended um i feel like though there's a significance to the fact that this king of air showed up and it seems to be that you need to tell him the story about what it is that you've accomplished through this process having this breakthrough your head is in the clouds yes where you can see you're getting all of this clarity and you're using that to kind of inform your life you've reconnected to your guidance and you're using that to inform your life and it's like tell the king of air all about that it's the reason he's here interestingly it's like he wants to hear about it or there's benefit in you communicating it to another. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. I'll see you next time. Sagittarius link to the extended is in the description box. Thanks. Bye.